Hello, everyone, and welcome to Book Trib's 15 Minutes with a Meryl Moss Media production. Today, we are welcoming trial lawyer and debut author Price Ainsworth. Price has been practicing law for more than 30 years, representing personal injury clients. And just releasing this month, June, is A Minor Fall, which is his debut fiction novel. Thank you so much for joining us, Price. Glad to have you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I want to jump right into it. I actually have a copy right here of A Minor Fall. And uh, tell us about the, about the book, the characters, some of the, you know, the story that, that we're talking about here. Well, uh, on the surface, it's the story of a young personal injury trial lawyer who seems to have everything going for him. He has a great career ahead of him, beautiful wife, uh, lovely home, everything's going well. Uh, and then he makes some bad choices. Uh, beneath the surface, uh, it's also the story, or the retelling, if you will, of the story of David from the Old Testament. David has battles with Goliath. Davy in our book of Minor Fall has cases against a guy named Gregory Gath. Uh, David has problems with Bathsheba. Davy meets a lady named Beth Sheehan. And the story goes on and on. Interesting. Interesting. So what for you, what it, was that the inspiration that that um, particular biblical story or um, what What really pushed you to write this? What made you feel like you had to get this down in, in novel form? Well, it's kind of a funny story. About 10 years ago, it seemed like everywhere I went, I heard the David story, whether it was church or at work or whatever. I kept hearing the David story over and over. At the time, we had two small kids and driving around in the pickup, we had the soundtrack from the Shrek movie, the first Shrek movie and I remember listening to the soundtrack over and over with the kids and there was this one song that I, I still don't know what it has to do with the movie but it but it was a terrific song and I started doing a little research about the song and the song was Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen and and the more I listened to the song the more I thought about it, how it was about David and then I got an idea for a story about that same time, my wife signed me up for a fiction writing for lawyers seminar, a one-day seminar. Oh, how interesting. It was, it was a very good seminar. <laughs> the instructor was terrific. And about halfway through it, I kind of stopped listening to the seminar and started outlining the novel. And, you know, 10 years later, here we are. Interesting. Very interesting. Have you taken any, uh, any of those kind of writing workshops since? Do you continue to go to those? No. No. <laughs> so just that one inspired it, and that's all you needed. Kicked off. <laughs> well, I, I probably need more, but, uh, you know, there's just so many hours in a day, Beth. Oh, that is so true. Don't we all know that? Um, so Tim Sullivan, is is he based on a real-life attorney, um, or is he kind of a mashup for you? Yeah, he's more of an amalgam of different okay. lawyers I've met over time. Okay. When I got out of law school, I got to work for this terrific federal judge in East Texas. And it was a jurisdiction that tried a lot of cases. And so pretty, pretty much every day we were in the courtroom. Mm. Uh, because it was a notorious plaintiff's jurisdiction where plaintiffs would win cases, then good plaintiff's lawyers were trying to file their cases there, which meant good defense lawyers were responding to the cases there. And we were in trial every day and we saw terrific lawyers. And I started jotting down interesting things that I heard lawyers say, like uh, money hath no odor, mm -hmm. and little quips like, like that. And I've kept a kind of a running journal of those sayings, and I thought I might figure out some way to work those into the book. And so often, Sullivan, we call them Sullivanisms in the book, mm -hmm. espouses these different philosophies different lawyers say. <laughs> right, right. Right. Um, in the book, um, you highlight several kind of interesting cases, um, specifically a, a doctor maybe losing his license and a medical mal malpractice. Are these based on particular things that you've experienced over your career or the cases that you've dealt with? Well, some are sort of made up. Uh, okay. I did have a radiation contamination contamination case that I worked on great lawyers at one point. Uh, the case didn't come out our way and I really thought the 
individual property owners were done wrong in that case. Mm. Uh, and then some of them I, are just made up. A lot of times during the book, what I'm trying to do is work in the different biblical stories as I've imagined them or reimagined them and so that they'll fit the the scenario of David. Interesting. Really interesting. So um, there are several chapters told through different points of view, different characters. Um, but the the main character, da Davy, he he have he of course has his own chapters. What what made you go that route to to show all of the different point of views and not just stick to only Davy? Well, it, it's hard to tell what other folks are thinking if you're That's writing right. in first person. So mm -hmm. sometimes we we shift to third person. Sometimes we yeah. shift to another first person, and then often or in one section it's actually told in second person so right right just so we could see what everybody in the room's thinking i like it okay um f in terms of um the particular uh, m those who haven't read it which are are most if they're not reviewing it at this point because it's out in the uh, middle of june right <laughs> sorry we're encouraging them to read it. of course um but for 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 those who want to know a little more that's within the pages, um, Davy pens some, some short stories within, within the novel. Can you talk a little bit about, about those stories without giving too much away, of course? Okay. Well, um, I think you've got a couple of different uh, tensions working there. One, I think Davy uh, wishes he had a more creative outlet than just being a lawyer. He likes yeah. being a lawyer, but... There's something else he's missing. Right. And then also the, uh, the short stories, the poems, uh, they, they serve as a means of telling part of the David story. For instance, there's a baseball story that Davy writes in the first section of the book, the first part of the book. And uh, the picture for the other side is called the lion, little league pitcher, because his hair sticks out from under his cap. And he plays for the Bears, the Carlsbad Bears. Well, before David uh, was chosen to be the one to uh, go into battle with Goliath, in just a few lines we learned that as a young shepherd, he had you know, protected the flock from a lion and from a bear. And so that was my way of working in the lion and the bear. He writes a poem in another part of the story. And, you know, David's the psalmist, so had to have a poem. Of course, of course. I like, I like the use of, you really tried to go at this from different angles, um, but you, you incorporated them so uniquely and differently. I really like the different ways you went about it and really thought it through than just the traditional, well, I need this, so I'm just going to write it in. Um, really interesting, absolutely. Well, and you were talking about why the different points of view in the book. Mm. Um, I've had I've had some great family support and friends that have read the book, and they would make a suggestion: What is this character thinking? What is that character thinking? Okay. And so, why not just write from that character standpoint, Absolutely. incorporate it into the book? Definitely. Now, this, um, as I mentioned earlier, is your debut, so it's your it's your first fiction novel. You're no stranger to to writing other nonfiction books um, in, in the lawyer realm. Um, but what prompted you to take on the, the fiction side of things? You know, I've just always wanted to do it. And okay. I like to read. Uh, I have a dad that uh, buys and sells old books, and he probably reads oh, three okay. novels a week. And it's That's just been, it. yeah, it's just been, you know, important in my family studying literature. And, sure. and, you know, novels, it's interesting to me that I'm, I'm not a big biography reader. I'm not a big okay. history reader. But I can read a, an historical fiction novel and learn something about what happened during that time. And so I, I've, I think a lot of my learning over life has been through fiction, through novels. And so I just wanted to try one myself. Oh, interesting. How long um, from beginning the process to the end of the process was was that process for you? How long did it take to write? It really, it really was a little over 10 years. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, and, you know, there just isn't enough time in the day to sit down <laughs> and, and write a book. But 
you can write a few pages, come back to it, write a few pages, throw the last ones away, sure. and uh, keep trying to put it together. Did you find at a certain point that the editing process, your personal editing process of your own work, you would get to a point where you'd say, I just, I can't look at that anymore. I have to consider it done. Or is there just like this process of constant editing that you go through, especially in a long-term project like this one? You know what it felt like to me more was at the first, I would write a paragraph and, and discard it, write a right. paragraph, discard it. But after probably the first 50 pages that I liked, then it just took off. And I knew how it ended, and I knew what the next scene was, and I just had to write it. And the characters take on a life of their own, and I kind of want to see where they're going. And it, it, it just, the train started rolling down the tracks at some point. That's amazing. Were there any bumps um, for you in, in the writing process of this of the fiction book as opposed to maybe what you're used to with, with writing anything nonfiction um, in your career realm? Well, usually when you're writing a brief or something, you've got a deadline and it's just got to be done. Sure. But, but with the fiction, it was more that you worry, you have self-doubt about whether or not it's worth reading. Mm -hmm. And so you worry about letting family members read it, letting friends read it to see what they think. You know, you hope they like it. You hope right. they read it. But uh, it's, hard, it's hard to hand it to them. Absolutely. So uh, we like to ask this of authors because um, with the abundance of uh, book-to-movie adaptations or book-to-TV show adaptations, do you have anyone in mind for these characters? If you could cast them yourself, um, have you thought of that? or? You know, we've joked about it. <laughs> um, the Michelle characters, the beautiful redhead, so it's got to be Emma Stone. Uh, I don't Perfect. know who I would do as the young Davy. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know who would be the young Davy. I think uh, Duvall would be a great oh. soul. <laughs> there you go. So if you know Mr. Duvall. Oh, yeah, I'll call him right up for you. It's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to work on who Davey ought to be. Who was the guy in? In uh, the drummer movie, the young guy, he's in a lot of movies right now, dark-headed. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, anyway, I'll think, <laughs> I'll think of it in a second. Someone out there knows, and they're yelling at their screen right yeah. now. <laughs> so with the way the book ends, um, there's, there's the option or possibility of more sequel or more than a sequel, whatever it might be. Is that something you're taking on, something you're in the process of, thinking about, anything like that? I've got some ideas for other books, but I, I think we're going to leave Davey where we leave him. Okay. All right. It's, it's time for another book. Okay. I've got an idea. Um, there's this guy named Danny, and he finds himself in something of a lion's den. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I like anyway, it. I've got several ideas that I'm working on. Wonderful, wonderful. We'll definitely have to uh, have to keep an eye on that. Of course, much plenty of time has to pass first because this is really a wonderful novel, and and everyone really should just go grab it as soon as it's on sale or pre-order it from Amazon. Whatever you need to do. Um, I know one of the things I like to ask um, of our authors is. What are what are you enjoying reading? I know you mentioned you like um, historical fiction, but is there anything right now or any authors right now that that you're reading that you're enjoying? Um, you know, anytime Donna Tark comes out with a book, you've got to read it. There you uh, go. And then, That's great recommendation. I end up reading the same things over and over. I probably read all the Hemingway books, you know, every four or five years to read. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, this is um, really exciting because we're speaking right now, so who knows, um, at some point down the line when people are watching this, if the book is already out, but the book isn't out yet, and we've, we've gotten a pre-glance to it. Um, so again, it's right here, Minor Fall, um, hardcover, it's beautiful, really beautiful cover. Um, what else, what's, what's happening for you at this point for the rest of 2017? Are you signing books anywhere? Are you going on any kind of tour? What, what are your plans for the rest of the year? 
Well, there are several book signings set up in Texas over the next month or so. And then I'm doing radio interviews, and, and we're going to have a big launch party here with my buddies in town. and We're having fun with it. Good, good. I'm so glad. That's There's nothing better, I think, as a debut author to really um, enjoy the process because so many authors at a certain point are like, oh, I'm... I'm over that. It is what it is. But I, th I think it's always cool when your new book comes out. It's such a celebration. Well, it's it's funny. Just in the past couple of days, I've gotten Amazon is is releasing the pre-orders. So high school friends from 40 years ago that I haven't talked to are emailing and calling. Amazing. And it's been fun. Yeah, yeah, that must be really exciting. Well, congratulations on the release soon. And um, thank you so much for talking with us about the book and, and the inspiration behind it. It's all very interesting. Thanks. Absolutely. And thanks, everyone, so much for watching. Have a great night.